Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, February 19th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap the college basketball and NHL games from yesterday and look ahead to tonight's slate. John Beeline resigns as the coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Ryan Newman is out of the hospital. And I have my best bets for you as well. All right, we'll start in college basketball where the slate wasn't that busy yesterday from yesterday. And then uh, tonight's slate is a different story. It's actually pretty busy. So just let's get right into it. Um, Texas Rio Grande over Texas Permian Basin, 93-80. to St. Francis Brooklyn over LIU, 87-77. Illinois over number 9 Penn State, 62-56. Tennessee over Vandy, 65-61. St. Joe's over Davison, 73-72. Number 17, West Virginia over Oklahoma State, 65-47. UMass over St. Louis, 67-63. Buffalo over Ball State, 72-59. Akron over Western Michigan, 71-67. Eastern Michigan over Kent State, 70-49. Ohio over Central Michigan, 77-69. Wisconsin over Purdue, 69-65. Florida over Arkansas, 73-59. Wagner over Mount St. Mary, 67-61. St. Francis, Pennsylvania over Robert Morris, 86-71. Bryant over Merrimack, 61-52. Central Connecticut State over Fairleigh Dickinson, 76-75. Number 7, Maryland over Northwestern, 76-67. Number 8, Florida State over Pitt, 82-67. Number 5, Dayton over VCU, 66-61. Number 5, or 15, Creighton over number 19, Marquette, 73-65. Missouri over Ole Miss, 71-68. Number 1, Baylor over Oklahoma, 65-54. Number 10, Kentucky over LSU, 79-76. Nevada over New Mexico, 88-74. And UNLV over Colorado State, 80-56. Tonight's slate is very busy, to say the least. 6.30, Fox Sports 1. You have number 21, Butler, at number 16, Seton Hall. 6.30, Fox Sports 1. It's a big one. Seton Hall is a five-point favorite. I have Seton Hall by five and a half, so it's very, very close. I'm going to lay the five with Seton Hall. I think it's a bounce-back spot for them after a bad loss at Providence. So give me Seton Hall minus five there. Syracuse at number 11, Louisville, 7 o'clock on ESPN. Louisville is a nine-point favorite. I would make this Louisville by 11. So... Louisville, I'm going to lay the points here. Don't feel super about it because Louisville really has shit the bed lately. A couple bad losses here and there. So give me Louisville in a bounce back spot, this time for real, and at the Yum Center, minus the nine. Seven o'clock on ESPN2, you have number 13, Auburn at Georgia. I would make this game Auburn by... Nine, and it's four. Anthony Edwards, I feel like, is the reason why Georgia's getting too much love in the market. Nobody likes how Auburn is played. I mean, yeah, they lost to Missouri. That was a terrible loss. But this is a nice bounce-back spot here for them. This is like the theme so far. Give me Auburn minus four and what should be a bounce-back. I love that game a lot. Big Ten Network at 7 o'clock, you have... Michigan at Rutgers from the rack. I would make this game Rutgers by seven. It is Rutgers by two and a half. I think Michigan's getting too much love because they're Michigan. So give me Rutgers minus a two and a half. SEC Network, Texas A&M at Alabama. Alabama is a ten and a half point favorite. I would make Bama only by four. So give me Texas A&M getting ten and a half. On the road in Tuscaloosa. ACC Network. Georgia Tech at Wake Forest. Two bad teams in this conference. I would make this a pick em. And Wake is giving points at home. So give me Georgia Tech plus the one and a half. Battle of two dysfunctional programs. Two coaches on the hot seat. Yada yada. You know the whole deal. Those bad teams from the ACC. Next up on um, ESPNU, you have UCF at Cincinnati. Cincinnati's an 11-point favorite. 
I would make Cincinnati by ten and a half. Let's see, am I doing the math correctly here? Um nine and a half. My bad. So um give me UCF in the eleven. Do I feel good about it? No. CBS Sports Network, East Carolina at Memphis. Memphis is giving a whopping 13 at home. I would make this Memphis by 9.5, so give me East Carolina and the points. You have Iona at Siena. You got... Navy at American Army at Loyola, Maryland. Lehigh at Colgate. BU at Lafayette. George Mason at Richmond on ESPN+. Plus. Richmond is an 11-point favorite at home over George Mason. I would make this Richmond by 12. So I'm getting a point of value here with Richmond. So give me Richmond um, minus the 11. Do I feel good about it? No. Chattanooga at the Citadel, Furman at East Tennessee State. That's a fantastic game, by the way, in the SoCon, so let's pick that one. Um, Two teams that I feel are pretty even. I would make East Tennessee State a a 3.5 point home favorite, so I feel like I'm getting a point of value here with Furman. Do I think Furman's going to win the game outright? I think they can, but I don't think they will. So um, give me Furman plus the 4.5. But I do think, ultimately, that East Tennessee State will win the game. Wofford at UNC Greensboro. Sanford at Mercer. VMI at Western Carolina. Lamar at Sam Houston State at 730. Nichols at Northwestern. Central Arkansas at Stephen F. Austin. 8 o'clock. Missouri at Bradley in the uh, Missouri Valley. Um, Okay game here. Um, I would make this Bradley by 8. It is Bradley by 5.5. So give me Bradley minus the five and a half at home against the Mississippi Valley State team that I think is overvalued. Valparaiso at Drake. I would make this game Drake by five and a half and it's four. So give me minus four with Drake. Illinois State at Loyola Chicago. I would make this line Loyola Chicago by 15 and a half. And it's 11 half, so I'm going to lay it with Loyola Chicago. I know there's letdown potential after the big win over Northern Iowa, but I just like the spot for that team. McNeese at Incarnate Word. Abilene Christian at Houston Baptist. TCU at Texas on the Longhorn Network. Texas is a two-point favorite. I'd make this Texas by two as well. So, hey, um... What do I always say? If um, if you're even with the market, go with your gut. And my gut says that Texas wants to play hard for their coach that's on the hot seat with all the John B. Line rumors coming in after his resignation as Cavs coach. There's rumors that B. Line might go to Texas. They're hearing that already. I'll get to that a little, little bit. So give me Texas at home straight up. But if I if you force me to pick a side, I'd pick Texas. George Washington at Duquesne. Duquesne's a 10-point favorite. And I would also make this um, Duquesne by 10. So the second straight time, I'm going to say go with your gut. And my gut says uh, that Duquesne will probably cover that number. So give me Duquesne minus 10. So normally in the case of the go with your gut, I either go with um, the home team that's a big favorite or... Um, maybe a dog if the dog is uh, pretty pretty valuable. Fordham at LaSalle. LaSalle's a seven and a half point favorite. I'd make this LaSalle by six. So I hate picking Fordham against the spread. Um, so uh, give me Fordham in the points. That's what my models say. SMU at Tulane, eight o'clock on. ESPN 3. Um, SMU is a 7-point favorite on the road. I would make this SMU by 7.5. So give me SMU minus a 7. Do I feel good about it? No. UL Monroe at Arkansas State. 
South Dakota State at North Dakota. North Dakota State at South Dakota. Cal Baptist at UMKC. ACC Network, Boston College at Virginia. Virginia is a 12-point favorite at home. I would make this 8.5, so give me Boston College plus the 12. 8.30 on Fox Sports 1, you have Providence at Georgetown. I would make this line Georgetown by 2. So give me the minus 1.5 with the home favorite. 9 o'clock, ESPN, number 6, Duke at NC State. Duke is only giving 6.5. So they're trying to tell you that this could very well be a trap game. And guess what? My projections also say 6.5. So we're even here. So go with your gut. Oh, my God. I'll go with Duke. I don't feel good about it at all. I hate that my numbers agree with this, but here we go. That my number agrees with um, Duke in a possible trap game spot here. Um, I know a lot of people are going to take NC State. A couple of my buddies will probably be on NC State tonight, but um, I'm staying away from this unless if it goes to 7, then I'll take NC State, and if it goes to 6, I'll take Duke. I'll put it that way. CBS Sports Network, you have number 12, Villanova at DePaul. Villanova is a four and a half point favorite on the road. I would make this Nova by seven. So give me Villanova minus the four and a half against the worst team in the Big East. ESPNU, Tulsa at number 22, Houston. Houston is favored by 10. I would make this Houston by five. So give me Tulsa plus the points. Tulsa is a better team than giving credit for. And um, I think Houston is overvalued in the betting market right now. Big Ten Network, Indiana at Minnesota. Minnesota is a a 5.5 point home favorite. I would make this Minnesota by a half. So give me Indiana plus the points. I think Minnesota will... Win the game. South Carolina at Mississippi State on the SEC work. Um, Miss State is a five and a half point favorite on the road. I would make this actually South Carolina by four. So that's a big discrepancy. So give me South Carolina plus the five and a half there. Kansas State at Texas Tech on ESPN2. Texas Tech is giving... 11 and a half at home. I would make this that same number. Texas Tech by 11 and a half. I am getting a lot of agreements on the market today. So um, go with your gut. Then Texas Tech would probably cover. Um, ACC Network, Miami at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is a four-point favorite at home. I'd make this Virginia Tech by six, so give me Virginia Tech minus the four in that one. Going to the Mountain West Conference now, Wyoming at Utah State. Utah State is a whopping 20 and a half point favorite at home. I would make this 19 and a half, so I'm getting a tiny bit of value with Wyoming. So give me Wyoming plus the 20 and a half. I don't feel super about it because it's only a one point difference. 10 o'clock, Boise State at San Jose State. Um, I would make this Boise by eight, and it is Boise by 10. So give me San Jose State plus the points in that one. Air Force at Fresno State. Fresno State is an eight point favorite at home. I'd make it three because I think these two teams are pretty even. So give me Air Force plus the points in that one. Um, Pac-12 Network, Cal at Washington State. Washington State is a five and a half point home favorite over Cal. And, whoa, I would make that five and a half too. I think this is the most amount of times that um, I've noticed that uh, the market and I are together. So, um... 
go with your gut. I take Cal in the points, but Washington State to win. And then the other game that we haven't talked about yet, it's a Big West game, Long Beach State at UC Irvine. Now we'll talk some NHL. We'll go over the slate from last night and look ahead to um, a short slate for tonight. Flyers over to Blue Jackets, 5-1. Pens over to Maple Leafs, 5-2. Red Wings over to Canadians, 4-3. Sunders over to Sabres, 7-4. Blues over to Devils, 3-0. Hurricanes over to Predators, 4-1. And the Jets over to Kings, 6-3. Six games tonight. I didn't realize that uh, the Wednesday night slate was this big. 8 o'clock, the Rangers at the Blackhawks on NBCSN. Doc Emmerich, Eddie Olchek, Brian Boucher on the call, probably. Wouldn't rule out Kenny Albert because it's a Ranger game, and I wouldn't rule out Joe Micheletti either, but it's probably the three that have been doing Wednesday night games for the majority of the year. And I wouldn't even rule out Pierre, uh, Pierre Maguire if um, uh, somebody can't make it. So um, two teams that are rebuilding, two teams that are original six, two teams that um, were good five years ago. Um, I'm going to go with the Blackhawks at home in overtime. Um I think that uh, the Rangers are probably better than Chicago. They've been playing better than Chicago lately. Um, but I think home ice is a difference here. If this was at MSG, I'd pick the Rangers, but it's in Chicago, so I'm going to go with the Blackhawks here. Coyotes at the Stars. Bruins at the Oilers. Islanders at the Avalanche at 10 o'clock. Panthers at the Ducks. And at 10.30, the Wild at the Canucks. I want to talk about something I discussed on the podcast the other day. That it was a rumor that this was going to happen, but it's official. John Beeline and the Cavaliers decided to part ways. Um, I'm not that surprised because of the news that was trickling out during the All-Star game. Um, the Cavs are obviously 14-40, and 40, worst record in the East. Um, there are some people in the media that thought that he was going to be one and done. There's others that thought that uh, he'd get a pass because it's year one on a bad team. But um, Beeline probably thought, I don't think this is going to work. I don't want to get the treatment that uh, David Fisdale and some other um, second-year coaches have gotten. You'll see that with probably Jim Boylan at the end of the year. Um, So um, get out before it gets worse. And that's probably something that Fisdale probably should have done and some other Guys that I've seen this happen to before as well. Tom Thibodeau in Minnesota. I'm trying to think of other um, examples of um, coaches with dysfunctional teams um, that probably should have left before even getting fired. He probably thought he was getting fired and saw it happen to Fisdale and was like, I don't, I'd rather leave now before, and then uh, get fired at the end of the season or mid-season next year when our team's going to be bad. So... J.B. Bickerstaff takes over Cleveland. Bickerstaff did a nice job being the intern for Kevin McHale after McHale got fired from Houston in 2015-16 season. And he also was an intern coach for the Grizzlies after David Fisdale got fired and did a nice job with them as well. And then they let him go. And then they hired the the kid that um is a um, coach in Memphis now who's um, got them in the eight seed right now. Um, so Bickerstaff's not the worst coach in the league. I think that he'll be the permanent head coach of the Cavaliers. Cause I think that, um, he probably deserved that Grizzlies job, but, um, they got rid of him and look where the Grizzlies are without him. I know, uh, landing Morant was a big help, but I don't mind Bickerstaff. I think he, um, is a nice veteran coach that, um, can get a lot out of some players. So, um. We'll see if they start to play better after uh, Beeline's removed. And to me, the question is, does Beeline go back to college or does he just retire? There's a lot of speculation that he may go back to college. The big job that's open is, or that could be open, I should say, is Texas with Shaka Smart being on the hot seat and somebody that um, really hasn't lived up to expectations in Austin. And there's some speculation that Beeline can end up there or um, even Chris Beard from Texas Tech. I'm surprised Chris Beard didn't go to UCLA last year. I've said that on my podcast several times that I thought he'd go to UCLA. 
but he didn't. He ended up staying with Texas Tech, and then Mick Cronin went to UCLA. And another job that could potentially be available for Beeline, I don't know if he'll do it, but Boston College or Wake Forest, those are two bad teams in the ACC. Maybe he goes to one of those places and turns them around. There's speculation about Northwestern, Minnesota. Someone mentioned Indiana, but why would they get rid of Archie Miller in year three of a somewhat of a rebuild at Indiana? I just think it's because um, Indiana is like a dysfunctional school that um, really hasn't been good in a long time. Fired Tom Crean after making a Sweet 16, or a year after making the Sweet 16. Archie hasn't made the tournament with this team yet. Although, I wouldn't rule it out this year. I think that there's a chance that Indiana does make the tournament this year. But um, if he doesn't this year, then maybe next year he's listed as a hot seat guy. And um, maybe um, uh, Indiana takes a look at Beeline if Beeline doesn't go back this year. Or there could be that coach that makes the jump from college to the NBA. And then that job could be available for Beeline. So I think Beeline has options and... He's certainly the hottest commodity on the coaching market from a college standpoint. Ryan Newman came home from the hospital today. That's really good news. Um, reports yesterday came out that he was speaking the doctors and his family, which is great. But the concerning thing to me is that there hasn't been a report on his injuries. Like Nobody knows what bones he broke or anything. But the good news is that he's alive and is speaking and... Um, and is out of the hospital, which is, which is very good. And um, now the question is, um, what are the injuries? How long will be he be out of racing for? Um, so it should be interesting. I just wanted to bring that up to close the podcast here before best bets because it's obviously the biggest story in sports right now. And um, it could have been a lot worse, obviously, but um, very happy for Ryan Newman and his family and the NASCAR family that uh, Newman is uh, alive, well, speaking, and um, out of the hospital. So that's very, very good news in the sports world. Best bets of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Oh, for four this week. That's bad. I mean, I've been rocking and rolling for the most part since I've done the two picks for best bets. Last week I went 9-1, and one, which is awesome. So, uh, without further ado, here we go. Um, college basketball, I'm going to go to South Carolina getting the points against Mississippi State. I just think that... Um, South Carolina is a little undervalued, and Mississippi State, on the other hand, is super-duper overvalued. I'm trying to find that line out. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait. Mississippi State's home? Oh, my God. I thought South Carolina was home this whole time. Oh, my God. I totally screwed that over. If that's the case, so which is true, they are home, Mississippi State. I thought that they were at South Carolina, so um, I think Mississippi State's going to win the game. Um, I'd make this Mississippi State by two, but South Carolina, I think, will cover that number. But it will be a close game. But I'm going to stick in the SEC for my best bet. Though. I'm going to lay the four with Auburn against Georgia. Um, I think that Auburn is in a good opportunity spot to bounce back. Georgia's a not-so-great team, but has a great player in Anthony Edwards. But I just feel that Auburn is obviously the better team in a spot where I think they're capable of bouncing back. So giving Auburn minus four at Georgia. NHL best bet, um, I'm not picking the Rangers on the... Any other um, things I like here? Um, I'm going to do something I normally don't do. Um, I'm going to lay the 
the puck line. And I'm going to do it with the Florida Panthers at the Anaheim Ducks. Minus the one and a half. It's plus 190. So it pays out 290 if I let you a dollar here. So um, I'm going to take the Panthers minus one and a half on the puck line against the Anaheim Ducks in Anaheim as my hockey best bet of the day. Tomorrow the NBA returns. So um, we'll be looking at the slate for tomorrow and um, have a best bet and pick the TNT games. Um, that's assuming there is TNT. Um, college basketball and hockey as well. And... Tonight, I'm going to have James Celestin on the show from a podcast that I was on last week known as Sports Dudes. And then tomorrow, I'm going to have John Buchacross on to talk about the NHL trade deadline and what is still to possibly come. And I'm also going to have Terry Cushman on of Benny and the Bets to talk about the Astros and Red Sox respective cheating scandals and talk about other off-season moves and possible um, things that could happen this upcoming baseball season. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.